Hello friends and welcome back to the channel where I'm very excited to show off my latest rank 3 7 star which is Ironheart here. So I'm a big fan of Ironheart as you might know from watching the channel. I've already made a video discussing how good her utility is especially in the tech class. So this video is going to be more focused on her damage output and I want to make sure you know what kind of results you should be able to expect from her at rank 3. So we're going to cover some Act 8 fights, some Battlegrounds matchups, a really cool war fight against one of the most dangerous defenders in the game right now and then we'll finish up with a necropolis solo let's jump right in all right let's start off by reviewing her damage rotation i do cover this in a bit more detail in the ironheart guide that i have up on the channel but for now let's just cover the basics ironheart functions by placing damage over time debuffs with her medium attacks by default, she's using incinerates. You can switch to ruptures with a pre-fight, and that's really useful because there are still very few champions who are immune or resistant to rupture in the game. And then with the special one, places additional debuffs and also pauses all existing debuffs for a certain number of seconds. And then in between specials, you can dex to add more uh, debuffs. And then very similar to a champ like Morbius or Quicksilver, once you have enough of these debuffs applied, you want to race up to your special two, and then the special two will deal an additional amount of damage uh, per debuff on the defender. Unlike Quicksilver, unlike Morbius, however, those debuffs are not consumed, which does allow you to kind of build back up to the special one and repause everything if you need to, or go right back up to a special two if you're running power backs. So Winter Soldier has roughly half a million health, and we're going to plow through about 250k of it with this big special 2, 33 debuffs, and uh, down he goes. That's about a 1 minute fight to get through half a million health. Not too bad for a tech champ who is mostly utility focused. Alright, let's move on to some questing scenarios. This is the Professor X boss from Act 842, I think it is. He has just over 700,000 health, and the nodes here are designed to inflict falter on you more frequently and also increase the duration of that falter. So if you don't bring a miss counter, you're really going to struggle in this fight. Fortunately, Ironheart is one of the best miscounters in the game. Once we get five or more debuffs on him, she inflicts a permanent tracking pass, if you can see that little eyeball icon there, and then from that point on, she cannot miss. Another great feature of the tracking passive in this fight is that it enables Ironheart to parry non-contact attacks, which means we can get our openings against Professor X a lot more easily than we otherwise would. One of the synergies that I'm running in this fight, and you'll see me run in other fights, is the War Machine pre-fight, which gives her increased duration on all non-stun debuffs, just makes her a little bit easier to play. For now though, we are building up to a big special 2, we have uh, 24, now 26 debuffs applied, fire off that special 2, and that is 700,000 health gone in under a minute, and if you're surprised by that, some more damage numbers later are going to surprise you just as much. Moving on, we have the Emma Frost boss in Act 843. She has a node called High Energy Diet, which is really going to limit your tech options because most of them rely on energy damage one way or another. And then she also has Armor Break immunity, so you really have to play around her diamond form rather than disable it completely. So when it comes to Ironheart, you can see that we have opted for our Rupture pre-fight instead of the default Incinerate debuffs. When she's in diamond form, Emma Frost is immune to practically everything uh, when it comes to damage over time effects. Ruptures is one of the few effects that she is not immune to. So being able to switch to Ruptures in this fight is what's going to enable Ironheart to get her damage going. You can see that Emma is building up a concerning number of prowess effects in this fight, so if we were to take a special to the face, it would probably hurt pretty badly. We could remove them with a heavy attack, that's one of Ironheart's abilities. However, there's a note on Emma that punishes prowess removal by turning them into permanent fury effects. We really don't want to do that. By now, everyone knows that Emma Frost triggers reverse controls on her special attacks when she is duped. Ironheart is immune to reverse controls when she has one of her personal armor ups, so it just makes the fight, again, a little bit easier on that front. Now, you can see me kind of taking like a special one spam approach to this fight rather than building up to a special two. And that's also because Emma Frost has an ability in her dupe, kind of like a safeguard mechanic, where if you deal a certain amount of damage, she automatically triggers her diamond form in order to reduce that damage. So building up a bunch of rupture debuffs instead of going for a big special two is actually going to make this fight go a little faster. That said, I do take the chance here to try and end the fight. And as you can see, once we had like a big crit, she triggered diamond form. Uh, and we were able to finish off the fight shortly after with a couple more hits there. 
All right, the last quest fight I want to show you today is the Sasquatch boss, also from Act 843. He has 1.2 million health, big beefy boy here. And he also has a node that you may notice from AQ Map 8, if that's what you play, where every so often he gets a protection passive, and you remove these passives by doing either a medium combo ender, a heavy, or a special attack. So in this fight, I really wanted to demonstrate how Ironheart is able to maintain a steady stream of damage, even when her rotation is disrupted by having to take actions such as these. So I'm kind of keeping one eye on that protection timer in the top right corner there, because if you let these protection passes stack up above like one or two, the damage reduction is significant and it's really going to make the fight a lot longer. I think they stack up to five and by then you're doing practically nothing here. Uh, so I'm kind of working in my specials when I can, timing them so that when the protection comes up, the special attack immediately removes them. And if you, again, if you play map 8, you are used to this node and you probably play this on a weekly basis. But it's a little different when it's a 1.2 million health Sasquatch. Uh, in terms of utility, we are going to be completely turning off his healing factor because we have so many debuffs applied to him that in combination with the Despair Mastery, his regen rate is going to be reduced to zero and thus will never trigger uh, any of his regens here. And then from here, we just really have to worry about uh, the power efficiency that he gets when he triggers Wrath, making sure not to hit into him when he's unstoppable, you know, all the standard things that happen uh, when you play against the Sasquatch. We are going to go for another big special 2 in this fight, and I think it does roughly 28% or so of his health, and in a 1.2 million health fight, that is close to 350,000 damage. Uh, and again, this is unboosted. I am running that War Machine pre-fight, but that doesn't increase her damage. It really only helps increase the duration of her debuffs. Speaking of debuffs, you can see that we have hit the cap of 50, and we're dealing roughly 9,000 damage per second with all 50 of those applied, keeping them paused easily with the special one and the sentinel relic as well. So right here, we're going to build up to that special two, and again, this does roughly 336,000 health. A couple more crits there, we might have done a little bit more, but you can see it absolutely decimated a significant chunk of his health bar. And then from here, it's just a matter of removing the final protection and kind of finishing him off. No regen to worry about. Relatively smooth fight. You can see we've basically lost no health here in this fight. And uh, so 1.2 million health. Again, a bit of a longer fight because you have to deal with that protection. Uh, but some impressive damage numbers, I think, regardless. Okay, next up is an Alliance War fight that I am very excited to show you here. This is a rank 2 onslaught on the Node 47 mini with missing in action and power efficiency. Now Ironheart is a hard counter to almost everything that Onslaught has going on. She is almost able to completely turn off her, his ability to Neuroshock you through your block. She can turn off his reverse controls on the special 2. She can also completely disable his ability to convert the Neuroshocks into degen again via that special 2. So if you're kind of trash at fighting him like I am, uh, she's a really safe option here. Now in this fight, uh, she's a metal champ, of course, so she cannot remove those Neuroshocks naturally. A lot of special one dexes to nail in this fight. Uh, and this is actually the first time that I've ever nailed every one of the special one dexes in a fight. I practiced uh, quite a bit before going into this mini boss. Uh, I'm also medium boosted here, so you can kind of get an idea of, of where the damage might look like if I had been boosted like I normally would for an in-season war. As it is, I'm not going to boost heavy uh, for a war that doesn't really mean anything here. Again, safely pushing him here to the special 2, take a heavy to the face, that sucks, but whatever. And we have more than enough debuffs on him uh, to handle the reverse controls here. We're just going to take the whole thing on the block here because I'm not really comfortable with that dex. And uh, the falter triggered at the same time, don't really care about that either. As long as we keep up enough debuffs for the tracking passive, again, we can basically turn off everything he's got going on here. Letting those Neuroshocks expire naturally. They're doing a little bit of damage, but really not enough to be dangerous to us here. And then uh, spamming special one, because our debuffs are starting to fall off here. And I think here I'm going to push him to the special two. And I know here that again, because Ironheart reduces the ability accuracy of mutants by 150% when they hit her block, he has no way of converting the Neuros into degen there, as you can see here. So we can safely take this entire special two on the block, punish it, uh, right into the striker, and that finishes him off. So again, Ironheart, a really safe counter for Onslaught in Alliance War on a variety of different nodes. 
All right, let's move on to some Battlegrounds matchups. First off, we have a rank three dust here, courtesy of my alliance mate, Gara. Now, in general, I have found Ironheart to be a very sneaky good attacker in Battlegrounds, mostly because nobody thinks she's good, therefore nobody bothers to ban her, even though I have her at rank three. Now, in this matchup in particular, Dust is a defender who can deal a lot of unavoidable damage if she builds up those sand passives or debuffs on you and then spins up a sandstorm. However, given that Ironheart has easy access to Incinerate on both her medium attacks and her special one and whenever she dexes, we can effectively turn off Dust's ability to generate this type of unavoidable damage completely. Anytime we get a sand debuff on us, like right there, all we have to do is just do a medium attack or a special one or whatever, and it is immediately removed. So right here, we're gonna finish the fight with a big special two, 19 incinerates, and that has a rank three dust in the bin. That's 48 seconds, I think, and a nice 49K score. All right, next up we have a rank two Shuri, a very strong matchup for Ironheart for a few reasons. So first off, once we get tracking up with five or more incinerates, we'll be able to safely parry all of Shuri's non-contact attacks, which is going to give us easy openings and prevent us from having to take too much block damage baiting out a heavy. In addition with tracking up, once Shuri goes untouchable, we will be able to safely hit into her. We won't have to wait out that untouchable passive. That's going to save us time and end up increasing our score at the end of the fight. You're seeing Shuri generate a lot of her armor up passes in this fight, and that is going to reduce our non-crit basic hits. However, Ironheart has a lot of access to damage over time, and while she has those armor up passes running, we are still doing a decent amount of damage just with the incinerates themselves. So in this fight, again, we are going to be building up right to the special two. I think I only paused the debuffs once, and there we go. Big special two to finish the fight. That's a rank two Shuri down in under a minute. Again, Hulkling probably faster, but if you don't have a Hulkling, Ironheart's going to work just fine. All right, this is a good one. We have a rank five Weapon X here. Ironheart has no access to heal block, and Weapon X is immune to regenerate modification, so we cannot make use of the Despair Mastery to reduce his healing. However, he cannot regenerate any of the damage over time that we're inflicting via these incinerates. In addition, we're basically just going to be out damaging his regen anyways. So at the start of the fight, we triggered his Berserk mode, Special Intercepted, and then Striker Intercepted to push him back over bar power. This allows us to safely cycle specials. And now from here, I'm just going to work all the way back up to his Special 2, and you're going to see we are going to completely nuke the rest of his health down, regardless of whatever regens he has going here. Finish up with a Medium, and then the Special 2 finishes the fight. Rank 5 Weapon X without access to Heal Block, and that is a 44 second fight. Okay, here we have an Ascended Prowler, courtesy of my alliance mate Bittersteel. You might be wondering why Prowler is included here, given that he's really not much of a defensive threat. However, he does have an interesting ability where if you try to punish his special attacks, he will inflict a passive falter on you. So you really do need a miscounter for him, or you're going to take kind of a time penalty waiting for another opening from him. In addition, his medium attacks are non-contact, so you do have to either bait out heavies or try and reparry. Ironheart again gets around all of this. Once we have tracking up, and we're using ruptures as you can see because he's incinerate immune, we don't have to worry about that falter. We can safely punish his specials. We can safely parry his medium attacks. No worries. Baiting out one more special one, punishing it right into the special two, and that is an ascended prowler down in like 40 seconds. I think this is a 51k score. Pretty good. All right, here we have a rank two Sauron, and similar to Weapon X, Sauron cannot have his regen rate modified or reduced by external sources, so we cannot rely on the Despair Mastery here to kind of bail us out. In addition, his regen potency is going to be increased by the number of prowess effects that he has. So what you're going to see me do here is out of the striker, I'm going to use the heavy. The heavy attack from Ironheart will invalidate a number of prowess equal to the number of repulsor debuffs that you have on the opponent which means if you are already at max capacity of 50, you can invalidate up to 50 prowess at one time, which really helps limit the amount of regen that he's going to be getting. Not really sure why I didn't go for the special two here. I think I wanted to try and just special intercept and maybe finish him off there. Landed a nice intercept. Regardless of the uh, lack of big finish here, this is still going to be a 50k score when all is said and done. 49 seconds. All right, let's talk through a bit more challenging matchup. We have a rank five Ascended Photon here. And in this meta, Photon can be really challenging because if you accidentally trigger the unblockable passive 
from the Battlegrounds nodes. While she has that special one, you are going to take the full brunt of that special one to the face and you're probably going to die. So at the start of the fight here, I'm just playing against Photon the way I normally do, watching her charges there, making sure that I don't knock her down and trigger Pure Light form until I'm absolutely ready to do so. We are safely using Incinerates here. We have tracking up, so if we parry her, we can still safely hit into her while she has that untouchable passive up. So I'm keeping a careful eye on my Fury passes on the left side of the screen here. We are at 9 here, so the next one is going to trigger that unblockable. So I knock her down here below bar power to trigger Pure Light form. And then from here, I've triggered the unblockable, so now I cannot push her above a bar of power or else I'm probably going to take a bunch of damage. So we end up wasting about 15 or 20 seconds here waiting for that unblockable passive to go away before we can kind of safely continue the fight. And our score does suffer a bit at the end as a result, but I want you to know that in most other metas when you don't have to waste 15-20 seconds against a Photon, you're still going to get a very nice score and finish with a good amount of health as long as you play the fight similarly to the way that I did. So everything has fallen off, we are safely finishing the fight here, 88% health I mean she does crit into block a lot so we've taken a lot of damage via that 79 seconds not the fastest but subtract like 15 or 20 from that and you'll have a better idea of what Ironheart can do in this fight in another meta Moving on, we have a rank 2 Storm P90X, a classic stall defender. Her glancing, super annoying, and you can only turn it off with a power drain. Not a lot of power drain champs have access to really good damage. So this is a difficult and lengthy matchup for many champions. The good thing here is that Ironheart's Repulsor debuffs are immune to ability accuracy modification. So while we are triggering that glancing on almost every hit, and she is preventing us from being able to crit, she cannot prevent the those debuffs from being applied on either our mediums or our special one. So a lot of our damage in this fight in particular is going to be from that damage over time. Having said that, you can kind of opt for two approaches in this fight. You can either chance the special two, although it's likely that all the hits in it are going to glance and it won't actually finish the fight, or you can do what I'm choosing to do here, which is opt for maximum damage over time and just keep everything refreshed and paused for as long as possible with the special one. And I do think you're sacrificing a little bit of time doing it this way. So this is like a 63 second fight or so, but it's still a nice 49k score, good enough to win many matchups. All right, here we have a rank 3 Emma Frost. We talked about Emma a little bit earlier in the video, but this is a different game mode, a little bit different approach to the fight here. So this Emma Frost is unduped, which means we can safely go to that special 2 because she won't have that safeguard mechanic built in where she'll trigger her diamond form. So we should be able to end the fight with a nice fat special 2. That being said, we are still starting the fight with the Rupture pre-fight instead of the Incinerates because she still will be in diamond form at various points in the fight and we don't want her shrugging off all of our debuffs. Reverse controls are not an issue here because this Emma is unduped of course and uh, I do waste a little bit of time here. I probably should have pushed her over two bars of power. I am much more comfortable with the special one so probably could have gained a few more seconds and as a result I also let a lot of these debuffs expire building up to my special two. So a little bit more aggressive play would have increased my score in this particular fight. You can see the special two as a result doesn't actually finish the fight because we only had a few of those debuffs but another combo does finish the fight. That is a 60 second fight against a rank 3 Emma Frost. Alright, here we have a rank 2 Bishop, and you might not think it, but this isn't exactly the greatest matchup for Ironheart. She has that incinerate immunity, and she has the ability to place physical damaging debuffs instead of those incinerates. However, her basic attacks still contain energy damage, and so we are going to be feeding Bishop a lot of extra prowess. So in this fight, you're going to see me try and make use of the heavy attack to kind of keep his prowess under control. Also, I do make a little bit of a mistake in this fight, and I let him fire a special one into my block when he has a bunch of prowess right here. And you can see all those hits deal a nice chunk of damage through my block. That is just the crit through the block from the meta, I think. It is what it is. So if I had been a little bit more patient, held block, forced the heavy, and heavy counter with one of my own, we would have been just fine. So my score does suffer from this. You can play this matchup just fine with Ironheart. Uh, in a meta where he's not going to be, you know, pounding you through your block, it's going to be a little bit better. Uh, but just to be aware, you do kind of have to manage his prowess because she doesn't have the ability to just give him no prowess like a lot of other tech champs do. So there we go. That is about a minute 
or so fight, 60 second fight, 46k score. Again, probably could have been better if we hadn't taken that special one on the block. For the last Battlegrounds matchup I want to show you, we have a classic defender, rank 5 Ascended Doom, and with Ironheart you really want to play this fight a particular way. Because she is so reliant on that special one to keep those incinerates paused, you really need to push Dr. Doom to his special 2 as often as possible, which means you need to have the decks down for that special 2 every time. In addition, you can see that we have armor ups generating from our light attacks, so you're kind of playing a bit of a dangerous game here, because when those armor ups expire, you can assume that your opponent is running Mystic Dispersion, and you're going to be giving them a burst of power just like I did there. In some instances, that might actually help you by making it easier for you to push him over two bars of power. But again, I said before, a little bit of a balancing act because it is very easy to push him into the red if you have a lot of armor ups expiring. Now, this is a bit of a longer fight here. It is not the best matchup for Ironheart, but Doom also has a lot of crit resistance. So you can see our basic attacks are doing very little damage. And we are really relying on our damage output from the incinerates to kind of carry the day here. So again, you do not want him to throw his special one. If he triggers that aura of Hazarath, he's going to start nullifying your armor ups when you contact him, and you'll be unable to keep your stuff paused with your special one, which is going to probably cost you the fight here. So 74 seconds, not the fastest, but we did get through with a good amount of our health. 47k score, not the best, but also pretty good against the Doctor Doom. Last but certainly not least, we have a solo of Necropolis Odin, and despite having class disadvantage in this fight, Ironheart still has enough damage to get through it without the timer running out. So a couple of notes here, we are immune to the trap node here, which is reverse controls after these special attacks from Odin, so it makes it a lot easier for us to consistently stay aggressive in this fight, punish his special attacks, etc, etc. Uh, Synergy-wise, I do have the White Mags pre-fight running here, and that's just to kind of make up for our attack penalty from class disadvantage. And then I have the one War Machine pre-fight, as you can see, which is increasing the duration of those incinerates. But beyond that, this is all Ironheart. Once we have all of our debuffs running, she is dealing so much damage over time, her hits are going to be dealing a decent amount of damage, we can safely push ourselves to the special 2, and then get back to the special 1 in order to keep those incinerates paused. So this is kind of how you would play her most effectively in a long form fight such as this. The balancing act between cashing out with the special 2 and saving what's left of your incinerates with the special 1 is the most important thing about how you play her in a fight like this. Uh, not much else to say about this. If you have made it this far into the video, first of all, thank you very much because we are at 22 minutes or so now. Leave me a comment below that says Heart of Iron and I will let the rest of the fight play out. As always, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again next time.